Welcome to the 2016 Falls Prevention Fair. We've recorded some items uh, for those of you that were unable to attend the fair in person. Uh, we're going to be reviewing um, some safety measures and expectations here at Sur Age, uh, including the five P's, uh, pain, position, potty, periphery, and PO fluids. Uh, Aaron's going to review this poster uh, here in a little bit. We're just giving you some close-up views of the poster uh, as really not able to to see the poster up close when she's reviewing it but um, we will also be reviewing uh, a mock room so you will see a room that's set up where there's there's some things that uh, that are not set up correctly so either make a mental note or jot down some things that you see in this room coming up that are incorrect uh, we'll be reviewing equipment safety equipment and including the alarms, uh, how to put them on hold to prevent false alarms throughout the building uh, and other safety equipment based on the patient's diagnosis. We'll be reviewing ITW and the expectations on how to document falls within ITW. Uh, as we look at the poster, uh, please keep in mind uh, patient safety is of utmost importance. It is vital to the successful recovery of our patients and eliminating preventable falls should be what we strive for every day. The mock room will be coming up. This will be a patient who has suffered a stroke. Thank you for watching and thank you for keeping patient safety at the forefront of your daily care. Good morning, I'm Erin, I'm with Occupational Therapy, and I have been asked to bring and just touch on some points about safety to prevent as many falls as possible within our facility. We decided that it was a good time to bring it up again, because our numbers in 2015, out of 12 months, 9 of those 12 months we missed our benchmark goal of uh, the amount of falls that we experienced here at Sur H. So it's just time to kind of revisit some of the things that we do. Within the first eight hours of a person being admitted, a nurse will assess them for their fall to, and to determine their falls risk. If they are a TBI or a CBA is being admitted in, they're typically brought in at a level two. So all others, we will start at a level one. The level one safety precautions are that they're issued and will use a gate belt at all times. We ask that you make sure that you have that gate belt close by before you get the patient up out of bed that way they're not um, at risk for falls. So they get this safety gate belt.
belt. They're issued the non-slip footwear, which typically for a level one will be a blue color. Uh, you will see other colors sometimes if they're wearing them from other hospitals. Um, they are issued these anti-tippers on the wheelchairs, which help with falls. They'll be on the back side of the chair. If you see that they're not on there, just make sure you let someone know and we'll get them on there uh, immediately. We also do have the front anti-tippers for any bilateral amputees. So we have one in-house right now and they have them on there. So just something to keep an eye out for. They are issued brake extenders in case they, uh, somebody with a stroke has some hemiparesis, they can reach over and a gap allows them to have a little bit more access to reaching that side of the chair. Uh, also, bed rails are up on, by two sides. The top two bed rails should be up at all times. We don't put the bottom two up. It's seen as a kind of restraint. So we have the bed two, the top two up. It allows them to have access to the controls and also helps with their movement of getting in and out of bed a, a little bit easier. And the night, we ask that the night light be on at night if needed. And that we have the call don't fall table tent on their table and the one that's in the restroom is also there for a reminder to, to help decrease those falls as well. All of these safety measures uh, stay intact when they become a level two. What happens when they become a level two is they are on supervised elimination. So they will, we'll, we will want somebody to be with them at all times in the bathroom. They'll be issued this yellow wristband for visual reference. And that yellow dot will be put on their door for another visual communication. Uh, they also, at a level two, will be issued the bed check and the chair check, which we'll go over a little bit more in a few minutes. All of the level one and level two safety will stay intact if they become a level three. A level three will have continuous observation while out of bed, so not only with elimination, but also when out of bed. We are trying to institute back the policy that we have of this wristband that you can find in the education room. It also comes with a tag that you'll have the patient's name on. Now this is not only another communication device, but this also passes responsibility. So uh, since they are supposed to be in continuous observation, while they're with therapy, the therapist will have that, they'll keep it with them and then whoever the therapist is passing them off to next will resume the responsibility of the observation. So they'll hand that off and that person is taking that responsibility. It should typically, uh, if it's in the room, it'll be kept on the vivid board or on the wheelchair. Um, and that's, so that's a, something that we're trying to get back to. They will be upgraded from the yellow band to the yellow and white stripe band. That means that they're continuous observation. And we will put a three on that kind of with a Sharpie out their door. Uh, let's see, the bed, the bed check and the chair check are still options. We also have a few more options available if there's any additional problems, which are the low boy bed with the mat next to it, if there's continued falls. We have the veil bed, which is seen as a restraint but can be used. We can institute a sitter if necessary. We have the wonder guard um, and we have posy bar that can attach to the wheelchair. So those are some additional options that we have available if needed for anybody at risk of falls. While we have your attention, we're gonna go over some positioning that might help with some patients, um, especially in our neuro population. A lot of times you will see that OT has issued a, uh, an arm trough for swelling or positioning purposes. Sometimes when they're sitting there, especially some of our level threes, you'll see them kind of falling out of it or anything like that. Uh, Patients and typically get the queen. Sorry. Dr. Shaw, blue team, room 105, bed one, walking rounds are now beginning. A typical pattern Dr. that Shaw, some of our stroke patients team, go into is called a flexor synergy pattern. One. And it, this muscle musculature pulls that arm in just by a natural positioning. So in order to get them into an external rotation, instead of just placing this around them for safety, which is appropriate for some people, if you see them pulling out of it, we're just going to take that underneath their arm back over and that keeps the, and just hook it onto that side and that keeps them from being able to pull that arm in and it helps promote that positioning that we want for them to decline that, to decrease that future pain in that shoulder um, for that positioning. So that would be helpful if you see that or just let your OT know and they, they'll help out with all of that. The lap tray, like we said earlier, should be on the unaffected side. The arm trough which should be on the affected side. Some of our stroke patients have, are starting to 
increase with their abilities, maybe even have an orange band. At that point, this lap tray is not that necessary. So as a therapist, we're going to try and start discontinuing use of this if necessary and get it back into our wheelchair room where they're issued. So if, you, if this is part of their process, we'd like for it to be on. If not, the OT is going to place a note on the Vivid board that says that, the, uh, that it's been discontinued and also place it on the ITW reference page under information, equipment, and it will just say that they have, uh, that they, there's no longer use of the half tray. So if that's not on there, we ask that you tr try and have that on. Also with nursing, I know that we have the anti-contracture boots, which are Lennard, also known as Lennards. We're really trying to institute those being worn, even though patients don't like them very much. It really helps with their positioning and future problems down the road. If the patient's not able to pull that foot up voluntarily, we really want them in those things at night, especially with that kickstand out, helps from helping that, that hip roll out. And also, we all know that our patient's goals are to walk when they're at some point when they leave here. And that contracture, getting down into this point of position will really impact that walking ability later. So if you can just help that, therapy's gonna be doing a hopefully better job of educating them on the, on the purposes for that. So that should be also on this vivid board under the Lennard section. Last but not least, we have the five P's that we talked about signing off on the rounding note. We like everyone to try and do this as much as possible to make sure that everything is in a near area for those patients so that falls decrease. We're gonna ask them about their pain and let appropriate parties know if they need their pain medication or if it's time for that. We're gonna check their positioning. We're gonna see if, they, if we can put them in a better position for their pain or just for, for their skin integrity also. Asking them if they need to go to the bathroom, so potty is a third key. Emptying bedside commodes, urinals, anything of that nature, making sure they're close by. If we take care of that potty, then a lot of times they're not gonna to wanna to get up on their own because that's one of the biggest reasons. Periphery, just like we did over here when we were looking at this, we're gonna make sure that the bedside commode is closed, the lap tray is closed, the water is closed, call light, TV, cell phone, everything that they have that they might wanna get up for is closer by. Make sure that the area is clear going to the bathroom. Heo needs, just making sure that they have water available, maybe any type of snack if they're needing it based upon their dietary restrictions. So, any questions? Kind of stuff you already knew, but just revisiting it. Okay. Green flashing. Okay, is it flashing green right now? Okay, it's not doing anything right now. So, what? So anyway, uh, is it red? It's very slow. It's flashing. Kind of, yeah, but it's but it's not on. So Liz, go ahead and sit down, Matt. Is it flashing green? Well, it is now because it just clicked off because we had it on a 30 second hold and that 30 seconds was up. But let's say Liz is in the chair and she needs to um, be toileted. So I take her into the bathroom and I wanna get her out of this chair and transfer over to the toilet. I don't want that alarm to be going off when I do that. So how do I put that on hold? How do I do that, Elizabeth? You know? Press the down button. Okay. And how long do I have to hold it? Is there a time frame? Uh, there is a little time frame. And so if you count to 1,000, Okay. If you just push it down and hold it till it just count one one thousand, then it's going to hold it for thirty seconds. So one one thousand. So now it should be red and Liz is on hold, and so it's not going to go off. If the patient stayed is in the bathroom for a long period of time and you're standing in there with them, you might hear it actually ding, and that's going to let you know that it's when the patient sits back down they're going to be being monitored again. You might not hear the ding until they actually sit back down again. But I'm waiting to see if the half an hour, I mean the 30 second time frame shows up here and what actually happens if we actually hear the little ding. Um, so we'll give it a few seconds here. Let's see if it does anything. I'm not hearing it click on yet. It's still flashing red, right? However, if Liz does sit down on this again, would you sit down for me again, Liz? Mm -hmm. It will ding and she'll be being monitored. Did you hear it ding? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's say that I get her up, I'm going to put it on hold again, go ahead and get up, and all of a sudden I've got to go do something, and I can't, I, I got to put her back in this chair real quick. So I put her back down in the chair real quick. Okay, 30 seconds is not up. Is she being monitored? 
No, right? Because it's red. Now, how do I make it start to work again so I can leave? Just push tap it. it. Just tap it. Push it. That's all you got to do. Now, did you know that there's a difference that if you hold it a little longer, that you can put it on a five-minute hold? And that is what you need to do when you're transferring them from the bed. So when you're trying to get a patient up out of bed, before you even start to try to move them, you need to go to the bottom of the bed and push this alarm and hold it for at least three seconds. Now, Simone Etter told us yesterday that she has found that if you push it and see two red blinks and hold it for two red blinks, that's the same as a three second, hold. I mean, as holding it for three seconds. She says, because everybody counts differently. And she goes, I can do one, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and that's not three seconds. You know, she said, so I have noticed that another way to do it is to push and hold for two red beeps. So if I push and hold this, there's one, there's two. Okay, now Liz gets up. Now she be, should be on a five minute hold. Okay, we saw that it's, we, that was at about the nine. I'm gonna let this get past the three, and we're gonna have Liz sit down and see if it truly is on a five minute hold. So we'll give it a few minutes to see. But really, when you're moving from a bed, 30 seconds is not enough time. Because by the time you roll them over, it's already going off. And then to get them up, get them to the edge of the bed, it's just not gonna be enough time. Okay, so we're well past our 30 seconds. So Liz, go ahead and sit down. Is she being monitored? No. So we did have that on a five minute hold. So now she's back in this chair and she's not being monitored, what do I do? Push the button. And now she's being monitored. So if she gets up, it's going to go off. Does that make sense? Did you all know all of that? No? Didn't? Good. I'm glad you learned something new today because hopefully it will cut down on the false alarms and Nora's not going to have to say, is there a staff member in the room? Is there a staff member in the room? Have you said that in your sleep at night? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> you say it a lot every day, don't you? Yeah. You do. And so if we can cut down on those false alarms, it's really going to save her from having to do that. All right? So that's one of the things we want to bring your attention. The other thing... Okay, one of the other communication tools that we can use and we want you to put on the patient reference page in ITW is the patient's falls. And it belongs up here under the information section. Sometimes people put it down here under the precautions section, and when you put it down here, we're not going to see it. Because the way ITW works is when you put something on the patient reference page, it does it puts things in alphabetical order. So it was this was designed to say a patient fall, and the A is there so that alphabetically it will be the first thing that appears up here under information, which is where we want it, right there in your face so you can see it. And when you put something on there, we, if a patient has multiple falls, we want to be able to see that history. We want to be able to see that you put it on there and that it, how many times that person has fallen. So it should be put in with the date, the time of the fall, and just a little synopsis of what has occurred. Right now we've got three entries on here and they say that on the 14th at 6.30 the patient was on the mat next to the bed when they went in to check the alarm. And then on the 14th at 12.00. 15, they fell in the cafeteria, and then again on the 15th, they fell, uh, they were found on the mat at 6.30 in the morning again. So again, it's a history. It shows you right there this patient is having multiple falls. You always want to edit the entry, not put multiple entries on there. So there should be one, one label saying a patient fall, and then all the different times the patient has fallen. Anybody have any questions about that?